Welcome, everybody. It is so good to see you, to actually see you live. Really good. And super glad we're not doing this on a Zoom call. Super glad. We're so excited that you're here tonight um, and to be uh, engaged with the Holy Spirit. And we really know that it's going to change your life. I was just talking to my mom this morning, and she was saying she could, she's 78 years old, and she can remember her confirmation day. And I think the same is going to be true for you. This is a blessed day, and we're so excited to see not only you confirm today, but how you're going to be able to revolutionize our parish as you engage with the Holy Spirit back here at St. Victoria. So it is a special night um, for a number of reasons. Um, you're going to be the only class, probably, to have the uh, opportunity to have your confirmation in your home parish. Uh, on this dance floor area where you spent a lot of time over the last two years with your hometown parish pastor, Father Bob, pretty special, and with each other, those who journeyed together. So, um, and as Anne said, it's really special because tonight's the night of the Holy Spirit. It's your own personal Pentecost, and it's pretty cool. Um, we want you to know, we've been telling you for two years that you have been chosen, and you have. Um, God has a unique plan for each one of you. And uh, after tonight, he's going to give you the, the power to, to begin to uh, work that plan. And so what's going to happen is he's going to put people in your path. And they're people that are going to need you for whatever reason. They might need a hug, or they might need some counsel, or they might need uh, just someone to hold their hand. Um, but, but it's going to happen. So look for it, embrace it, uh, and enjoy God working through you. So I'd encourage you all to be really open to the Holy Spirit becoming part of your life tonight. And this is kind of how confirmation is going to work. I'm going to tell you about the logistics of it. So I, we've kind of all talked about where you're going to be seated. So you, your candidates want to be seated on this side. And then Father Bob will, um, you, as he comes to your spot, I'd like to start with Libby, we'll start over here. And Libby and her sponsor will come up to the end with their masks on. And then uh, Father will uh, give you the blessing with the chrism. And there's a little step to this. Oh, so, and when you come over, then your sponsor will have her hand, Hannah will have her hand on Libby's back, if they're so comfortable, or just over their hand, so, so we can do the confirmation over there. Um, and then Father will say something to you. What will you say, Father? And you will say, Amen. Let's try it. Okay, so... I'm telling you, the boys the first night, they were really crappy at this, so I want you to show them up and say it nice and loud. Uh, Theo will have the mic. No, we, we have to figure that out. No, just say it nice and loud, okay? And scoot a little closer to the mic. Yeah, I'll move closer to the mic. Okay, so you say amen last and loud, nice and loud, and then Father will say... Yeah, and then... Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Father will say peace be with you, and you would say... And with your spirit. All right, so you guys are all Catholic. You're ready to go. All right? It's just that easy. So Father will snake up this way, then come down this aisle and get Alyssa and Elizabeth, and then he'll come back up this aisle and get the last two, Lindsay and Emma. Okay? So that's how it's going to work. First, we'll have some liturgy of the word. We're not celebrating Eucharist today, so we'll be done within about an hour. But please, take this time to open yourself to this huge and amazing gift, once-in-a-lifetime experience to be confirmed. Thank you, Ann and Theo and Emily working the uh, stream live and all of you here. And uh, yeah, glad it's not Zoom tonight. And I do remember my confirmation in sixth grade, if you can believe that, back in the day. But it is about the Spirit and it's about the releasing of the Spirit, something you already have. And um, reading your letters is quite powerful for me just to, uh, parents, you'd be proud of your your daughter, um, knowing how they feel about tonight. So this is, it's right with their, that we're here. Um, I'm going to begin, and you can stay seated as I begin with a prayer. It's just, um, seems like a long year. It seems like a, so long ago, last September, October, when you started up for your sophomore year, and a lot's happened, and whoever would have thought It'd be a beautiful, warm day in June with all of us 
uh, with mass and that kind of thing. But this is life, and we roll with it. And I, I believe the Spirit helps us roll with it, with life, in a very good way that it doesn't crush us, but makes us resilient, like a car with good shock absorbers, you know. So um, this is the tip of the iceberg, this one hour together. There's a whole two years beneath it. A lot of hard work, a lot of prayer, a lot of friendships formed. Um, faith journey has be been begun and deepened, and, and here we are. So I offer this prayer as we begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. God, our Father, we pray that the Spirit you sent on your church to begin the teaching of the gospel, that it continue to work in the world through the hearts of all who believe and through the hearts of all here tonight who believe in your name. This is our prayer that we ask as we begin. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. And, um, Anthony, we got that first reading, or you want me to go right in? Okay. Libby? A reading from the first book of Samuel. One day, Eli was asleep in his usual place. His eyes had lately grown so weak that he could not see. The lamp of God was not yet extinguished, and Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli answered. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But he answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. Samuel did not recognize the Lord, since the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to, so he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and stood there, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown down, or thrown away, and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, I in you, and you remain in my word. If you ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is the Father's glory, that you bear much fruit in showing yourselves to be my disciples. As Father has 
loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my Father's command, and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love one another as I have loved you. No greater love is there than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Indeed, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you should might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so whoever, whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord. Be seated. Parents are trying to think how you describe the formation experience that your daughter has been part of the last two years and you know, in the, on the for, uh, faith formation team, it's kind of like we have this theme, we're in the disciple-making business. Now keep in mind, the Spirit makes the disciples, but we're part of that team. And um, that's what we've been doing. A formation, somewhat intensive formation program, uh, to be a disciple of Jesus. And what, is, what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus? I, I thought about that a long time, and it, there's, I came up with an acronym. And uh, bear with me, but maybe this will help you remember as I uh, talk about what to mean to be a disciple. But the first, take the letters. D, um, the disciple is devoted. Have you ever seen uh, someone in love? Maybe you've been in love yourself. You, you're totally devoted to that other person and excited to be with them. And a disciple is devoted to their faith and excited about Christ in their life. And they have this burning desire to be the face and hands of Jesus to others. And I've see, we see that, parents, in your daughters and the other confirmation candidates now confirmed that desire to, to be Jesus for others, to be his face and hands. The world needs that. And so the, the disciple is someone who's let themselves fall in love with God. Have you fallen in love with God? And then I will we'll let that stand for, I'm going to say, I'm all in. I'm in. Count me in. Meaning that, you know, life, what we'll learn, and these young people are learning that life is, not about me, it's about, it's so much bigger than about me. Otherwise, if we get bored with just me, me. Life is not about getting ahead, it's about um, helping others get ahead. It's the way I've, I've heard it put, faith is a, is a pay it forward proposition that, you know, think how we've been blessed. It's almost like Victoria has this little and Chaska and whatever 
we're so removed from maybe, I'm going to say, burning buildings, you know, the, the horror we saw some weeks ago, all this stuff, we see it on the news, but we've been, give, we've been blessed in ways that many other people have not been blessed, and we're going to, how do we give back? And that the Spirit is going to move your heart where you have that desire, I want to do something. I want to give back. And that's the um, I'm all in part. And then the S of the word disciple, we'll let that stand for uh, support. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you wither. And so if you want to stay connected to Jesus, we stay connected to others. That's really been the, the, the guts of the formation program is your little small groups. We got your small group tonight, your little band of sisters, you know. Um, Lauren and, and, and Carissa and Jen have done such a great job. What great role models. And you've had your little group and you've walked together and you've come together and as you go forward, we don't make this journey alone. We do it with others, you know. Find your, your band, your group, your, your circle of support. As, even as a priest, I have a, a priest support group. We, and I will say this, we literally, we get together and we go to confession to one another. And we just get tight, sharing at that kind of level. Find your uh, circle of support. You've had one, you get a taste for that. So that's the S, the C. I'm going to let that uh, C stand for courage, that the Holy Spirit will give you courage. It'll give you, you, it'll give you the guts to maybe step out and take a risk once in a while and do what's right. You know, I heard this story recently. There, Jackie Robinson was the first black African to play in the major leagues. This is way back, and they'd never seen a, a black African before, and and he took to the field, and that crowd, seeing a black man take to the field, center field, they booed him. And not just a little, but loud and long. Can you imagine? He's out there, and he's just, oh. But all of a sudden, he sees someone trotting out to him. It's a shortstop. And I remember him because as a kid I had his baseball card, Pee Wee Reese, just a little guy, because he was Pee Wee, that was his nickname, came out. You know what he did? He just put his arms around big Jackie Robinson. And the two men out there in center field, as the crowd booed and continued to boo, just held tight to each other. And they weren't going to let go until they stopped. And the fans realized that hey, we came here to watch baseball. And, and the booze faded. And there were the two men just still holding each other tight. And Pee Wee Reese walked back, and he didn't clench his fist at the crowd, I told you so. He doffed his hat. Jackie Robinson took his hat off. They spread love where there was hate coming at him. That's courage, that's guts. And the Holy Spirit is going to help you do that. And so there's the, the C. The second I is the Holy Spirit is going to help you be an instigator of, of change. That sounds like some radical thing, like, whoa, I'm not that kind. Of, I'm not that type. But let me give you an example. This young woman and her um, fiancé did their wedding last fall. But she has a special connection to uh, a church in South Minneapolis that's very close to Lake Street, where there's a lot of trouble. I have a hunch some of her friends are people of color. And she saw what happened, and their neighborhood kind of decimated. And, and she said, you know, I belong to a parish. And they reach out as the face and hands of Jesus. Let me see what I can do. And she sent me an email. And then I passed it on to John Abel. And I said, John, let's see if we can rally some food. And it kept coming and coming. And we, we had a, a boatload of food we brought down there. 
but that her name was Heidi. You can't get more Scandinavian than that, but down in this neighborhood, Heidi. And she was an instigator of change. And so you don't try to change the world. None of us are going to change the world, but we can change something for the better. How can I make this better? And Heidi asked that, how can I make it better? And she instigated something very cool. And the Holy Spirit was in her, and, and the Holy Spirit's going to be in you. And your instigators have changed. And you can do it, and you, you can take a little risk and say, I'll be a Eucharistic minister. We can use you right now. You're, you're, you're eligible. You're under 18. You need your mom and dad's permission, but um, think about it. We need greeter ushers. That's how you can... How, how can you make this better? You know, make a change. Uh, talk to Anna or Theo tonight. We can, we can use you. Literally, we need... So it, it's whatever you can do. From Do what you can with where you are, with what you have right now. That's making it, making a difference. Um, the P of the world, word disciple, you know, you look at... How many are in a sport? Raise your hand. Yeah. You know, an athlete has to excel, has to have a certain amount of discipline. So the athlete has a discipline of training practices that they are faithful to. They're up early. They are on the hockey rink. They're, they're running the steps. They're working on their game. And it's just practices, training practices. For the spiritual athlete that you are, confirm now, you take, you come up with your set, your, your um, program of spiritual practices that will keep you spiritually conditioned, ready for, for action. So you go to Mass, and we've got Eucharistic adorations on, on Thursday, and you, you say a rosary, you read your, your Bible, um, you get your program. It's going to be different for everyone, but come up with something, and I know you're doing that. It's impressive. And then the disciple of Jesus uh, is a leader. And I'm going to say, Jesus, it's kind of, I always say, you know, when I was a kid, I'd go down to the park, and um, you know, we'd play pickup games. Okay, I get to be on this team. No, you were picked. You were chosen. I'll take you. Okay, we'll take him. I'll take him. I always got picked last because I was a little guy then, you know, but that's right, I got picked to be on a team. And it's, it's not that you've chosen God. I mean, we, we choose, but initially God made the first move and chose you. And you responded, which is cool. And you're here today because you responded, but he picked you to be, Jesus picked you to be on his team. We're all on his team. And we're going to get playing time, all of us. We're going to get beyond the field. And that's, and with the playing time we get, we're going to be leaders. Um, a disciple, if you're a disciple, you are a leader. A lot of followers out that, there in the world, you call, being a disciple, you call to be a leader. You, you, because you know who you're, the one you follow that makes you the leader. And then the uh, E, the word disciple, last letter of it, is the word is be an evangelizer. Whoa, that sounds like something Protestant or something like I'm on a soapbox, like I got a Bible, I'm trying to convert people. Maybe even I'm banging them on the head with my Bible. I don't know whatever stereotypes, bad stereotypes we had. That's, that's not fair to the evangelists among us, but it's different than that. And, you know, I think of it, has there been ever any, anything that you've experienced that has been so exciting that you just can't help but talk about it. Maybe it was a concert you went to, you know. What was the last concert you went to? Well, probably not during COVID, I'll tell you, but anyone, anyone go to a good concert this past year? I don't know what's out there, tell me. <laughs> no? Yeah, Garth Brooks. I'd like to, I'd see him, you know. Um, but you go, you, you experience something like, I love that. And if I experience something I really like, you can't shut me up. 
And so with your faith, you experience something so good, you can't shut up about it. You know what I mean? You're just talking about it. Um, you're not forcing it on people, but you can invite people. Come to Mass with me next weekend. Serious. What are you doing 10.45 in the morning, Sunday morning? Except I'll call you and get you out of bed, you know. So we, we can, evangelizer is not afraid to invite. And they share what they've, the good thing they've experienced. And parents reading these letters, these students, uh, young people have experienced some pretty good things. And they're talking about it. And they shared them with me in these letters. One, one wrote, um, you know, I've learned how God works in my life. I never saw that before. I was like, but now I can see it. Another writes, faith is a journey. And confirmation isn't the end. It's just the beginning of a journey that never ends. Another wrote, um, <clears throat> my faith has given me the confidence that I can handle just about any adversity that comes my way. Wow. And you know what? There's going to be adversities because this is life, folks. We all have them. Another wrote, the last two years has helped me step into the big world out there that is awaiting me. And another wrote, confirmation, my faith has given me the desire to serve others through the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Because that's what it's about. So, parents, um, I'm so grateful to uh, small group leaders, Carissa, Laura, and Jan, and the, the team, Theo, Ann, Emily. We've just been surrounding these young people. And I'm really so grateful to the, the confirmation candidates now ready to be confirmed for what they've taught me. They're, they are our teachers, parents. They are now, we are each other's teachers. And they stand ready to be confirmed. And I'm so excited to do that right now. So I'm going to get my book. We're going to pray a blessing, kind of the imposition of hands. Call We really call on the Holy Spirit. Do that as I pray this prayer in your name. And then we'll do the anointing. And um, we'll take it from there. So, Let's have you stand. First, we're going to renew your baptismal promises of faith. That your parents made them for you some 16 years ago. Many of you right here at St. Victoria. Beautiful. Now it's your turn. And now your parents are going to support you in this and renew their baptismal promises of faith as we all are here today. Just respond, I do, to these questions. Do you reject Satan and all his empty promises? Respond, I do. And all his empty works? Good. Do you believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered, who died on the cross, but was raised up on the third day and now sits at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. We're proud to profess it in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so, candidates for confirmation, you have been born of the Spirit through baptism. Now, you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me talk about this Spirit. The same Spirit sent upon 
the apostles at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit poured out, poured out upon you, will help you live a Christ-like life. And the Holy Spirit will strengthen you to build up the body of Christ in strength and love. And so parents and sponsors, my friends, we pray to God, Father, that God will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates to strengthen them with faith, strengthen them with his gifts. And so we pray. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed uh, your, your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. So send your Holy Spirit upon them. We can extend that hand towards them if you want. To be their helper and their guide and give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Give them the spirit of, of right judgment and courage. Give them the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. This is our prayer. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Everyone, you can be seated as I go from candidate to candidate for the anointing. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Anastasia. Anastasia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Faustina, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you, Faustina. Amen. Thank you. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you, Elizabeth. Thank you.
Christopher, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Christopher. Okay. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you, Elizabeth. that prayer that Jesus gave. Was, yeah, the only prayer he gave us, taught us, his disciples, and we are disciples, and we pray it as Jesus has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power.